Hi everyone. Married Espresso Press Design. Welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to make Momagami dimensional clips. I'm dimensional button clips. I might add the word pillow in this. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to put in the description, but they are dimensional clips with a paper clip on the back. And let me get one here. As you can see, they are, I'm having a sunlight today. They are dimensional. So they kind of look like a little pin cushion or pillow. And they're very soft because I'm using the Momogami paper. They aren't that hard. They don't take that long. But first I'm going to do a little show and tell of what I've made using this, what I've learned, and a few pages of my kit on Shopify using the papers that I showed last video. And the actual Momogami technique is also in the last video. I'm not going to do the paper kneading technique this week. Just going to describe what I learned, etc. So here are the, a few of the additional pages in the kit that will be on Shopify only has labels, journal cards, templates for making envelopes and tags. This is a page of stamp type images, labels, journal cards, backgrounds. I didn't print all of the backgrounds. And this is an example of the page in the kit that's also available on Etsy. The reduced size file size kit that's available on Etsy. So, as you can see, I've been very busy. This, is, this technique is so beautiful. I've been doing it all week. So what I've learned, I've learned you can do it with tissue paper, even though it took much longer to get the desired softness on tissue paper. You can do it with magazines. You can do it with print-offs. I have many here. Today I'm going to glue that one. Many, many print-offs here and it just feels like cotton. Different weights of paper are going to give you a different degree of softness. Surprisingly, I, I used a paper from a sketchbook and even though it's a better quality of paper, it didn't give me the same amount of softness as a print-off. Why? I don't know. Maybe I just have to need this sketchbook paper much longer. Um, I then went on and sprayed this with coffee dye. Took the dye very well. So let me explain the, the madness behind my method. I felt, of course I'm going to make a book, but this is one thing I made. I felt that 
since the beauty of this is in the tactile experience, I wanted to come up with things that kept that feature. So I just made this little flip book <laughs> because that's what you'll want to do is just sit there and touch it. <laughs> I made this little strippy cluster. This is also uh, dyed and die cut tissue, toilet tissue actually I believe layered or napkin and it's also very soft so I just made that. I made a card and I only glued little dots in a small rectangle to keep it dimensional. Also very touchable. I did one page in my collage book with the magazine. Also very touchable. And then loosely glued another that's scrapbook paper. Also works with scrapbook paper. So those are just a few of the things I made. And then that led to the clips because I think when you see something dimensional <laughs> you automatically want to touch it. Um, I have a clip for this book this one which is very nice and works very well but I think I'm going to make another one today and use it for clipping this particular book because it needs a got a little bit chunky and it needs a clip. So that's what we're going to do today. I forget how long it actually takes to make one, about 15 minutes I guess. So what you'll need, I also made a heart one. It's also dimensional. I'm having a sunlight thing today, I hope to remember to stay right here in the middle. So I think I'm going to make one with this. What you'll need are some for the top dimension cardstock. I'm going to use um, file folder to keep the dimension. In the beginning I used foam, but I accidentally bought the wrong kind of foam, so it was thicker than this, and it ended up being a little too thick. So this is pretty much all I have of this particular width, and that's what's going to keep your pillow or dimensional from being crushed. So you can use foam, you can use dimensional tape. If I had a sheet I might have used that. But in the end I just use cardboard from a Amazon box. So that's just your typical cardboard which I have in there. You'll need two of those, a punch. I, I'm going to use the circle punch. Um, for the back and the front, but I'm going to reinforce mine back today with a cereal box. You don't want to reinforce your front because you're going to be shaping it. So you'll need shaping tool. 
if you don't have a shaping tool, you can use a round end of a crochet hook or the round end of a gel pen marker, something to that effect, as long as it's smooth and round. You're going to need some, these are paint markers, deco color, oil-based metallics, which is what I use to make the gold edge. It's not necessary. You can ink the edges. I'm going to show you that. And then I think they take about, I don't know, 15 minutes. I already have one glued and dried on my paper, a front and a back, because you're going to want to make sure that your glue dries completely before you punch it. For some reason it slows down the drying time and then if you try to punch it you're, go you're going to tear the paper so that's why I have one pre-glued and dyed. So let's just get started here. So what else I learned regarding the use of starch or oil is that um, they use cognac, conjac, uh, plant starch, cognac is a plant, fibrous starchy plant, kind of like a potato, they use it, and um, to make flour and gelatin. Let me get a ruler here and tear this. And it's used to strengthen the fibers. or stiffen the paper, strengthen the fibers for dyeing or stiffen the paper. So I did not use oils, I did not use any other medium. I just kneaded the paper and it worked fine. If I were going to use another medium, I would use the starch. Some people use tapioca starch, but you can get cognac starch in the US if you want. It's K-O-N-Y-A-K, K-O-N-J-A-C. Okay. So, that's all you do for the first step. Just glue your paper on your strip. Oh boy, I meant to glue the I meant to glue that backing on this, but that's okay. I'll just cut a piece and glue them together. Punch a piece. So that for some reason that stays wet even with this fast drying glue. So I'm going to use my prepared one. And if that's dry by the time, if that's dry and this doesn't take too long, which I really didn't, 
time myself. I will um, do two. So for the heart, if you have a paper punch, that would be better. But for the heart, I die cut the heart. And then applied the mamagami and then trimmed, trimmed the edges. So there's my back, there's my front. So this is where the shaping comes in. Get my clip back in my glue. You're going to want to have something to shape on, which I have my little shaping. This is just a packaging, foam packaging, piece of foam. And you're going to shape the top piece, not the back piece which maybe I'm going to punch and glue this so it can have time to dry, hopefully. I just want to strengthen the back piece a little bit. I think that's that would be helpful. In some pieces I used a different type of glue. So when the back piece got really soaked, it began to warp a little bit and I didn't like that. So hopefully this will work or I'll just be punching out another circle and using a plain circle instead. Okay. Now, if you want to spray, lightly spray the back of your circle to make it easier for shaping, you can. And then you're just going to shape the edge. Create your dimension. Depending on what size stylus you use, let me try this. We'll determine the depth of your piece. Okay. I want to be a little more. and how hard you push. <laughs> but basically you just want to end up with a little pillow shape like so. And then as you can see, because you did that, you have a tiny edge there. That's why I covered that edge with gold. I'm going to show you that in a moment. I'm just going to use, I found that cardboard, this is the part that's going to be different for everyone, is you're going to want to match 
the depth of your circle with the height of your cardboard. So I found it took two layers to make my cardboard the depth. One and a half layers would have been perfect, but as you can see, you're going to have a little tiny, let me get one here. You're going to have a little tiny space. Let me get out of the sunlight. You're going to have a little tiny space. And your the cardboard is going to be so that you cannot crush this after it's put together. And it's going to give you something to adhere the dimensional disc to. So I hope that makes sense. So basically I just, you know, cut my cardboard to size, which ended up being about an inch, one inch by one inch. My circle punch is an inch and a half. And then I put a smaller one on top, like so. And I just trim the corners. But if I were making these to sell, I would probably use black foam. You can also, if that little opening bothers you, it doesn't bother me, but you can also glue some cord or something, which this one I glued twine. Oh, that sunlight. I glued twine in there, but the additional amount of the glue kind of made my circle warp a little bit. So I didn't love that. <laughs> so I just skipped it. Okay, so I have my, we have our dimensional piece. We have our center reinforcement. We have our back. Now I'm going to apply the gold that shifted. Oh well, it's going to get covered up. I just applied the gold. Around the inner edge of this. Okay, and then I applied it around the edge of this. But I'm going to show you that you can you can ink both or you can do gold or silver or whatever you want to that little edge. So I'm just going to ink the top. To give a demonstration of how you just do either one or both, whatever you want. So one is inked, and then I put my paper clip, paper clip or size is your choice. I chose to put the, uh, you could also make this a hidden paper clip if you desire. 
that really doesn't bother me, so wait a minute. I want that word to be readable. I chose to put the longer side on the back. Okay, there's your clip prepared. And then it's just a matter of gluing. Your cardboard. This is also you. You do not have to use mamagami paper to do this. Of course, you could use any type of paper. Make a dimensional clip. But I found. Cardboard, if I wanted to smush it a little bit and make it flatter, I could. Foam. Foam worked very well. Dimensionals would work well. So there's step two. There's step two. And then I'm just going to lay this on top here so you can see. I suppose I could describe that kind of like a little hamburger. <laughs> so you want to make sure your dimension matches the depth of your your dimensional support matches the depth of your pillow, for lack of a better word, or cushion, to avoid crushing it and distorting it after it's put together. So, then, just a matter of gluing, gluing your top piece onto your backing. And that will hold it. Needs a little more glue, or not glue, gold around that edge. For some reason that it's not showing up unless it's just the light in here. And they are just, I also applied a tiny touch of glue to my glue, I'm saying glue, gold. To my paper clip. Okay. So you don't, after you glue that, you don't want to, just want to put it aside and let it dry because it will, it, it will shift if you keep pressing it <laughs> and you don't want it to shift. You want it to remain perfectly centered. Okay. 
Here's number one. So we're at 30 minutes. So I don't know that I'm going to do a second one. So that's how I did it. Just get that back in there. Um, this is hopefully dry enough. I'll try. There, I'm ready to make a second one. And I knock these out, I don't know, pretty fast. Wasn't anything too difficult, I hope. I don't think so. Um, the heart, you can do other shapes. If you glue the momigami paper to the heart and run it through the die cut, you're going to lose your texture of your paper, but you will not lose the softness. You can also, the heart is also shaped, but it's not as... It's not as noticeable as the... Um, is the circle and I just had those hearts lying around so I thought I would try it but you can do what you can try to do whatever shape you want as long as you're able to get the dimension and then they just clip on your designs beautifully beautiful beautiful and I think when people see dimension they automatically want to touch it <laughs> so that was another reason I wanted to try to make something else be tactile okay that's it. I hope that was, if that wasn't explanatory enough and you would like me to do another video, I'll do another video, but I think it's pretty simple to grasp the, the concept and why you would not, I don't know what type of glue you would actually find to keep those edges completely glued down without ha making a puddle. <laughs> Maybe a glue gun would do that. I don't know. You could try it. If that little separation bothers you, but it doesn't bother me. I think it adds to the dimension, so it doesn't bother me. Okay, that's all I can think of. Thank you for your time. Thank you for stopping by. I truly appreciate it. And if I didn't make something clear or you would like another demonstration, just pop it in the comments and I'll do it, do another video. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great week. Bye.